Hi, this is Deselany. Um, yeah, a recent feature, a little video I dropped about the uh, Enemy Indie City uh, compilation cassettes uh, got me thinking about um, some other cassettes that uh, I own and uh, how they also kind of fall into um, this category of being a kind of pop culture artifact. So yeah, I want to look today quickly at um, a kind of limited range of cassettes that were released by one of the most famous, one of the most iconic uh, indie post-punk labels in the UK, um, and that is Factory Records. Uh, Factory was started in 1978 by Tony Wilson and Alan Erasmus um, in the Manchester area and is just synonymous with that city's kind of greatest bands, probably, certainly of the post-punk era. Joy Division, New Order, A Certain Ratio, The Durati Column, um, The Happy Mondays. So a huge kind of mythology is built up around Factory Records based on, well, the music that they released and also, uh, to a large degree, just the absolutely kind of chaotic way that it was run. Uh, strange business practices, uh, really kind of sketchy contracts, terrible financial dealings, um, you know, everything from the artwork that they used to, you know, the amount of money they would spend on their offices to the huge kind of financial black hole that was the Hacienda Club. The one thing they insisted on was this kind of high art, high design concept. You know, Tony Wilson was very obsessed with the idea that um, music shouldn't just be great in itself, but the objects that you created around that music had to be beautiful, had to kind of draw you in. And I think that's where we come in with the series of cassettes that I'm going to talk about today. So in terms of the kind of the design and the aesthetic uh, of Factory Records and their releases, yeah, they really set a very high benchmark. And um, in 1985, they decided that, you know, the whole kind of idea of standard cassettes was just a bit passe and a bit boring. And uh, to tie in with the release of New Order's Low Life album, they commissioned kind of a special cassette format. Yeah, the actual packaging itself came as a kind of an oversized hessian kind of linen feel uh, on the box. And uh, inside it had the cassette with kind of this very nice kind of reduced size reproductions of all the artwork and sleeve extras and all the inners that came with the album. Yeah, the design of this uh, box and uh, font, the typography, everything that came with it was by Phil Pennington. And at this point, they decided that they were going to run out a kind of a limited run of archival releases from the factory back catalogue um, using the very same cassette format. So this initial release um, of cassettes focused very heavily on some of factory's earliest releases, uh, Unknown Pleasures, uh, The Return of the Doretti Column, The Graveyard and the Ballroom by uh, a certain ratio, and Closer by Joy Division. They decided early on that they were going to colour code these cassettes by artist. So the initial run of colours were um, some amazing names here. Um, the Joy Division uh, cases were in Helio, so that's that kind of purple shade you see. Uh, a certain ratio were given royal blue. Uh, the Duretti column were given claret. And as we've already seen, New Order had white. Um, over the following couple of years, as they released more cassettes in this series, more colours were added to expand as the number of artists that they were kind of re-releasing came into it. Yeah, these colours are very helpfully taken from the uh, www.factoryrecords.org. And um, as, you, as you scan down there, you can see some of the other colours. Uh, the Happy Monday's got an orange colour there. Um, and you'll also see at the bottom that there were some releases planned in this series that never actually made it into full production. Yeah, some interesting artists in there. Um, things like Quando Quango, which was... Uh, one of Mike Pickering's earliest projects. So that's Mike Pickering who went on to form the uh, very successful band M People. Um, and Section 25, a kind of a a band that very much mirrored Joy Division and New Order in their kind of turn towards electronics. They were actually produced by uh, Barney Sumner. Anyway, yeah, these are a fantastic set of kind of objects, just things in their own right. Um, they are a little more cumbersome. And they are a little more fragile than standard cassettes. Um, it's very easy to mark the cases, as, as you see on a lot of photographs of these. 
But um, yeah, I'd rather these things were kind of enjoyed and used. Uh, I, I do hate the kind of collector mentality of keeping something shrink wrapped. You know, um, it's an object. It's for you to enjoy. It's tactile. Use it. So as it happens, I do own um, three of this range myself, um, which I, I will show. I'll show you in a moment. In fact, I can bring up just to kind of show you the spines, just to see what I have here. As you can see, because of the claret color, that identifies them all as Durati Column releases. Uh, in fact, the three I have are the Return of the Durati Column, Another Setting, and Without Mercy. Um, I would really dearly love to own a copy of their second uh, album in this format, LC. You know, these cassette releases are kind of going up in collectability and in price. So um, I'm kind of a bit priced out of going for one of these if I see one. Anyway, um, let's just kind of take a closer look at these Durati Column cassettes, um, starting with the debut album uh, Return of the Durati Column, released in 1980 and produced by Martin Hannett. Um, yeah, uh, at the time of release, this was kind of considered quite a quite a bold statement. You know, it definitely wasn't post-punk as as we knew it at the time. Very uh, modern compositional feel, uh, entirely instrumental with Vinnie Riley's unique you know, guitar tones uh, and his style everywhere. Um, I think the interesting thing about this, this, this in terms of the cassette packaging is that the initial vinyl release did come uh, rather infamously in a sleeve that was made of sandpaper. The idea being that it couldn't sit next to your other records um, on the shelf without destroying them. So uh, if you look if you look closely there, you'll see that the cassette inner is in fact made of the same grade of sandpaper. Moving on, um, this is uh, another setting. Um, yeah, this would be uh, Vinny's third studio album as the Duretti Column. Uh, LC, the one I don't have, being the second. And it was released in 1983. Um, this one was produced by uh, Chris Nagel and Vinny himself. Uh, Chris Nagel being kind of a a long-time protégé engineer kind of guy who worked with Martin Hanna. Uh, personally, this is, is my favourite of the early Durati Column releases. Yeah, it's got a lovely kind of card in a sleeve thing here, uh, reproducing elements from the LP's artwork. Um, yeah, as I say, I love this album. Uh, it's got some great tracks on it. Bordeaux, uh, The Beggar, Smile in the Crowd. You've heard it before. Yeah, it's, this is just a really good starting point if you're... Uh, if you're new to the Durati column, I think. And then last of all, um, yeah, uh, this is Without Mercy, uh, the fourth album uh, of that initial Durati column release. Um, from 1984, this one is much more kind of modern, classical, less kind of song focused. Uh, it's basically two long pieces, one on each side, Without Mercy 1 and Without Mercy 2. Um, yeah, um, the original artwork used uh, a, Mat a Matisse piece called uh, Trivo Pond, uh, which was glued onto card. Um, the cassette uses the kind of the reinterpretation of that image uh, quite innovatively, I think, uh, uh, to kind of include the credits to the album. Uh, it's it's a really nice uh, it's a really nice thing, you know. Uh, one more interesting fact about Without Mercy is this was co-produced by Tony Wilson himself. I think it was the only time he ever actually kind of tried to actually produce. Uh, a musical kind of thing himself. Um, and as usual, uh, Vinny is quite <laughs> quite down on all his efforts, but uh, over the years, he's never been kind of, uh, never been one to hold back on his dislike of this album. He, In his own words, he calls it without merit rather than without mercy. Um, but yeah, so this is the last of the cassettes that I own in this series. So there you have it. The, uh, the kind of the big box cassette series by Factory Records. They're a nice reminder of how much thought and effort Factory put into their releases. I don't think you can deny that they produced some of the finest music of that period along the way. And I think some of the best looking uh, records, cassettes, CDs of that time too. Well, um, I hope you've enjoyed this brief look at uh, the Factory cassette series. Um, yeah, just Tune back into the channel when you want to see what else I'm doing, and uh, we'll catch up again. Bye for now.